Hey there, Python trainer Reuven Lerner here. And in this video, I want to answer a question that I was asked actually on this YouTube channel by one of the people watching. And he asked, I see that you're using Jupyter and you really like it. Why? What's so exciting about Jupyter? Now, I don't think he was actually acting skeptically, right? I think he was just sort of interested in hearing why I use Jupyter so much and why I really enjoy it. So let me give you a few different reasons why I really like using Jupyter. First of all, and this is probably the main reason, I describe Jupyter as my Python laboratory. I can do lots of little experiments. I can learn about the language. I can learn about my data. I can play with things. I can try things. And that's because Jupyter is what we call a REPL, a read, eval, print loop. Now, REPLs have been around in high-level dynamic programming languages for decades already. So maybe it's just the fact that I've been using it, this sort of tool, in so many languages for so long that I've grown used to it and I want to have it. Um, other REPLs were text-based. And so having something that's web-based that I can run on a server and make available on my computer, that I can run on a server and make available to students in my classes, that I can run on my local machine and then view myself. All that is really, really great. And the web browser means that I can go in and I can edit things and change things. So if I say here 4i in range, 5, print i, I'm like, oh, that's interesting. But what if I were to say print i, let's say, end equals space, right? I can do a little experiment. This is not a very surprising result to the experiment, perhaps, but is an experiment nonetheless. Right, at least nothing blew up as would happen in experiments and other sciences. So at least we're safe here and lucky here. So I can try different things and it's not uncommon for when I wanna explore a topic before I teach it, if I'm trying to sort of bone up on the subject, then I can go into Jupyter and play around. I'll create classes, I'll create functions, I'll read in data. Um, the things that I do in my courses, um, like my courses show my techniques. It's not a, a show, it's not a surprise, it's not different. It's exactly what I do in my day-to-day -day life. And in fact, I really feel um, strongly that in my courses, I wanna show people not just the syntax, but I wanna show them the process. What is the process of programming in Python? Now, does this mean that I only use Jupyter? No, 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 definitely not. Um, I use an editor, I happen to use Emacs, and I might do some videos on Emacs and Python in the near future, but I use Emacs to do my actual day-to-day -day Python programming. But I'm constantly going back and forth between my editor and Jupyter. Something doesn't seem to work. I'm not quite sure what's going on. I don't know which will be the best way to write it. So I go into Jupyter, mess around with it a little bit, try it out. And then when that works, then I put it back into my editor and I keep going. So it's this constant going back and forth between the two windows, trying to sort of use them each in their best way. Um, I would never suggest using Jupyter for day-to-day -day Python development, but I do strongly believe that it's great for, as I said, like experimenting, noodling around, uh, learning new topics. I also think it's amazing for use uh, in teaching, as I do with my students, and that's because I can show them what I'm working on. I can, I can get questions, and I love getting questions from my students. They can ask me something, and in real time, I can try it out. I can experiment with it. I can see what's going on. All sorts of times I've discovered interesting new functionality in Python that I didn't know about because someone asked me a question. I was able to replicate it on the spot, I guess REPL for replicate it, right? And try it out and see what I could do. And so it's that sort of interaction that makes, uh, I think my classes more interesting, certainly for me, and I hope for my students also. Um, one problem with Jupyter is that it's really de designed for one person to use it at a time. Um, and this actually caused me some trouble over the years because my students would see my Jupyter notebook and I could send it to them at the end of class, right? I would always email it to them at the end of each day so they would have it available to them as a record of what we had done. But during class, they would ask me to scroll up, scroll down. There's really no good way for them to use it at the same time as I use it. And then about a year ago, I guess, I was introduced to something called Git Auto Push. And Git Auto Push is a Python package. You can get it from PyPI. And the name says it all. It basically, on a once a minute basis, if I'm not mistaken, takes the current Git repository in which it sits and pushes it. So that means you have to set things up in advance. You have to turn on your Jupyter notebook inside of a Git repository. So I set one up for each class. You have to set something up on an external Git system. So I set it up on GitHub. And then I run Git auto push uh, inside that directory. And that means that about once per minute, it's pushed to GitHub. And GitHub then has this nice feature where it will show Jupyter notebooks, it'll render them. So my students basically get, maybe with a one or two minute delay, exactly what I'm typing into. And that means that when they're doing exercises, they can 
take a look. They don't need to ask me to scroll up, scroll down, or to repeat things quite as much. And that's good for me, but it's also good for them. And as I said, it means that they get a record at the end of the day. And that's another reason why I like using Jupyter. It makes it easy to share. I can send this actual document. This is a living document that they can install on their own computers use, run, experiment with, and try. They're not getting slides that they then have to copy and paste or type in, and they're not really sure what should happen. They have my inputs, they have my outputs, they even see my error messages, ha, as if I make errors in class. That would be ridiculous. Um, so they see everything, and if I really want to, I can then download it into different formats. So under the file menu here, I can say download as. There are a whole bunch of different formats. Quite frankly, I never download it into anything. The very rare times when people have asked me to do that, we've all sort of regretted it because the notebook is actually, I would say, the best format for using that. Um, the other nice thing is that Jupyter has a huge number of advantages over a text REPL in its navigation. Not just the editing that can go back and I can edit something, but I can do all sorts of great stuff via the keyboard. And of course, I, I type and I type kind of quickly. And so it's nice that I can go just sort of through my notebooks. I can go down here, I can create a new one here, and I can go back up here, and I can like I can even like move this around. So I can do like an X here and move it down there and V there. So I can copy and paste cells. I can paste cell more than once if I want to try it. I can open a new cell above this one. I have a different video all about the different shortcuts that I use in Jupyter, but those shortcuts are my day-to-day -day working environment. They allow me to really sort of uh, move through Jupyter quickly and easily and make things as available as possible, as visible and as useful as possible to my students. Finally, um, I also teach courses, introductions to data science and machine learning, and one of the most important things in the data science world is visualization. You want to be able to see and understand your um, data. So how do I do that? Well, I can just say PyLab inline and then import pandas as PD, and then I'm just going to say here, I'm going to say DF equals PD data frame of, let's call it 10, 20, 30, or I should have to do a series here, sorry, 40. 30, 20, 40, 50, 60. I have two, four, six, eight, nine there. Let's do another one here. And I'll just say index equals a list of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. And now I can say D, F, not really D, F, right? It should be S for a series. I'll just do that here. It's much better. And now I can say S dot plot dot line. And look at that. I get it in line inside of my browser window. And this is super powerful. It means that when I share the document, they're getting my data, they're getting my code, they're also getting my visualizations. That is really, really great. And that's one of the reasons why data scientists love using Jupyter so much. I will add that there are lots of things that Jupyter does that I have not yet really explored in depth. There's just so much to learn. There's the Jupyter Laboratory, which is a more modern version of Jupyter than the simple notebook. It includes the notebook inside of it. And from what I've seen, it has some nice features, but they're not really that um, important for me personally. Um, I may change my tune at some point in the near future. Um, the Jupyter uh, Laboratory actually has a ton of plugins that you can install. Um, and then there are all these magic commands. Right here, I use the PyLab magic command. It starts with a parenthesis, uh, not parenthesis, it starts with a uh, percent. And you can write your own magic commands and you can use lots of built-in things. Um, even if you don't have magic commands, you have access to the Unix shell. So I can do like, you know, uh, ls star.txt, for example. Okay, well, nothing there, fine. Um, but I can really navigate through the shell uh, just as easily as I could from the Unix command line, which is another really valuable thing. So there you have it. There are like four or five, six different reasons why I really like Jupyter. It takes a little while to get used to it because it is a different kind of environment. It's not perfect. There are some issues here and there, but the developers of Jupyter are doing an amazing, amazing job. I'm truly impressed by everything they do. They come up with new versions on a regular basis, and it has just made my life completely different, uh, both for me and for my students. So I hope this explains why I love Jupyter so much. If you have other questions about Python or other things that I talk about in these videos, please drop me a line. I am on Twitter. I am on email. And if you like these sorts of explanations, you'll probably like my free weekly newsletter for called Better Developers for Python and other programmers. Thanks again, and I will be back soon with more Python videos.